Greetings and welcome to 2018 KCSE Chemistry Paper 2. Question 3 Tested on temporary versus permanent changes. There was a bit of gas laws as well and electrochemistry. Join us as we go through the question. Part A. Complete table 1 by indicating the observations, type of permanent or temporary change, and name of new product formed. So our first experiment involved heating candle wax strongly in a test tube. So the observation would be that the candle wax melts or a student had the option of telling us that liquid is formed. This would be one mark. Type of change is obviously temporary and name of the product remains candle wax or a student had the option of telling us that the product is called liquid wax or we also had an option of calling the product molten candle wax so for the type of change a half a mark and for the name of product another half that is two marks for the first experiment moving on we have the experiment being anhydrous copper 2 sulfate is left exposed overnight so this is a salt that is able to actually get some moisture from the atmosphere to become hydrated from anhydrous. So the observations that we were able to take note of is that your anhydrous copper 2 sulfate turns from white to blue. Mentioning white half, mentioning blue half. You cannot get the mark for blue if you missed the mark for white and vice versa. Type of change, again we know is temporary for a half a mark. And we call the product hydrated now, hydrated copper 2 sulfate. Some student would also call it copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate. All that is allowed as name of the product for another half a mark. Total marks for experiment 2 is also 2 marks. Experiment 3, we are told iron wool is soaked in tap water for two days. The observation would be that gray iron wool turns brown. Again here gray half a mark, brown half a mark. If you missed the first color, we deny you even for the second color. So this of course we know is rusting and therefore the type of change is permanent for a half a mark. And the name of the product, rust, is allowed, but a student also had a better option of calling it hydrated, hydrated iron 3 oxide, because that is the chemical name for rust, hydrated iron 3 oxide. So filling this table 
to completion and getting all the observations and the types of change and the name of the product correct were worth six marks. To question B, we are asked to use the setup in figure three to answer the questions that follow. So the flask was covered with a cloth that had been soaked in ice cold water. Roman 1, state the observations made on the colored water. So here, there were some confusion that a student who does physics would actually encounter. Because a student who does physics would actually think in terms of the flask, the container of the air also contracting as we introduce the ice cold water cloth. But in terms of chemistry, we shall not be concerned with what happened to the flask. Our main concern is on the volume of air inside the flask. So, because we have cooled the air in here, we expect its volume to decrease according to Charles' law, and for that matter, the colored water would actually move towards the flask. That was what the examiner expected. But I know for those who do physics, we may think otherwise, that actually it's the flask that will contract, and therefore, this would make the colored water to move away from the flask. That is physics. In chemistry, we don't mind what happens to the flask. Our interest is, as I've said earlier, the volume of air that is inside the flask. And obviously, if you cool air, its volume is supposed to decrease. So the observation here would be colored water colored water moves towards the flask. This for one mark. And then we are told to explain. So the explanation would be that cold water cold water contributes to decrease in what? In temperature. A student had the option of saying that cold water contributes to decrease in air volume. And a student also had the option of saying that Cold water contributes to decrease in pressure. All these were allowed as explanations. Good. So, the explanation would award or would actually uh, give the student another one mark, totaling to two for that section. And then we were asked to name the gas law illustrated in figure 3. This is all about temperature and gas volume. And as we all know, this is Charles' law for one mark. At B of question 3 for the year 2018 KCSE chemistry paper 2 actually tested on electrochemistry. So we are told... Use the standard electrode potentials in table 2 to answer the questions that follow. So a half Z of element Z, the E naught is indicated here, element V, W, Y, U. And then question 1 for part B. Write the half cell representation for the element whose electrode potential is for hydrogen. A student who has done electrochemistry knows that hydrogen half cell is the reference half cell and therefore its electrode potential is always zero. 
and the answer expected here was therefore w plus w2 just read what is here though the examiner had other options for the answer if a student wrote w plus and w2 half that was another answer ex accepted the examiner also accepted w plus and w with no two and lastly the examiner even accepted platinum w2 w plus or any of those would give a student one mark to part two arrange the elements in order of reducing power starting with the weakest reducing agent so here I always advise our students to remember a very simple what I call tagline and our tagline goes like this the half cell with the most negative because we are asked about reduction we shall go for the most negative e not value this is our strongest reducing agent this is how the tagline goes so your reducing agent normally gets oxidized an oxidizing agent normally gets reduced that's what we are basing our arguments on now oxidation always takes place at the anode of the complete cell and anode when you are drawing the cell representation is always put on the left hand side so this becomes the tagline that would help us answer our question too for most positive it is the opposite of what we have written here so coming now to our question we've been asked to arrange our elements in order of reducing power reducing power starting with the weakest reducing agent so we have said the one with the most negative is the strongest oxidizing agent so it means the weakest reducing agent would be the one with the most positive so you check your values the most positive is actually u u is followed by z z is followed by w2 or you just write w with no 2 then we have v next and the element with the most negative the strongest reducing agent is actually y so the order u z w v y is good enough for that one mark next question state two half cells which combine to give a cell with the least emf so here because we are asked the least emf we shall pick two half cells one with the least least positive least positive is zero and the one with the least negative so to get least emf we have least positive and least negative least positive is zero and least negative is v so our answer to part three becomes the one with zero is w plus w2 and the one with the least negative is v2 plus v that gives the one mark for part three then we are asked to calculate emf of the half cells identified above now emf the electromotive force of a cell is given by e reduced species minus e oxidized so if you look at our tagline here remembering this tagline would actually help us know which one would be reduced and which one 
would be oxidized. So if you look at our value, W is having 0, 0, meaning it's the most positive, and V is having negative 0 0.4. So you ask yourself, of these, which one shall we reduce? And which one shall we oxidize? We shall reduce the one with the most positive, that is W, and we shall oxidize the one with the most negative, which is V. As dictated by the tagline which we have just talked about up here. I want all students to master this. It makes this topic quite easy in issues to do with calculating EMF. So now we shall have reduced having 0, 0 and then oxidized having negative 0 0.4 and that gives us EMF of positive 0 0.4 volts. Half for the subtraction, half for the answer. And that marks the end of 2018 KCSE Paper 2 Chemistry, question number 3, which tested on three areas, and that is temporary, permanent change, Charles Law, and electrochemistry. We wish you all the best in your revision, and keep it the Kenyan teacher.